Japanese researchers are studying fish organs to estimate how long radioactive materials will remain in fish caught in the waters off the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. High levels of radioactive substances are still being detected in some fish caught off Fukushima Prefecture following the nuclear accident of March 2011. The study is underway at the National Research Institute of Fishery Science in Yokohama near Tokyo. The researchers collected organs called ear stones from 30 rock trout and black porgy caught off Fukushima and Miyagi prefectures since last August. As fish ear stones grow in layers, the research say it's possible to pinpoint the approximate time when fish absorbed radioactive materials. They hope to determine if the fish were tainted with radioactive water released right after the accident or if they continue to take in radioactive substances by eating seabed creatures. The researchers say radioactivity levels in fish are expected to decrease if the period of contamination is limited to the time of the accidents. The, they say their study could help to decide when full-scale fishing in the area can be resumed. 155 million yen, or 1.8 million dollars, that's the all-time high price of bluefin tuna weighing more than 200 kilograms fetched at the year's first auction at Tokyo's Tsukiji Market. <laughs> Saturday's auction started at around 5 a.m. Buyers used hand signals to bid. Tuna caught in waters around Japan and flown from overseas covered much of the auction floor. The $1.8 million tuna was caught in Aomori Prefecture, northeast Japan. The price was nearly three times the previous record set last year. The successful bidder was the president of a big sushi restaurant chain. I'm happy to get such a good tuna but it was a bit expensive. We'll sell it for the regular price. We want as many customers as possible to enjoy the fish. Japanese bidders have been facing fierce competition in recent years with overseas buyers, especially from China. Bluefin tuna is increasingly popular there. High levels of radioactive substances are still being detected in some fish caught off Fukushima Prefecture following the nuclear accident of March 2011. The best of the rest of the news to a story that tragically just won't go away, the Fukushima nuclear crisis. Radioactive fish are now swimming in U.S. waters. Scientists have, for the first time, discovered bluefin tuna that were contaminated by the Fukushima nuclear crisis in Japan last year swimming off the coast of California. Radioactive cesium, ten times above the normal level, was found in the fish, though health officials say the levels are too low to be considered a health threat. Then again, no amount of radiation is good for you. Meanwhile, back at the crippled nuclear plant, a bulge was detected in the walls at Reactor 4, increasing fears that the structure holding tens of thousands of highly radioactive spent fuel rods is not sound. Should the Reactor 4 building give way, it could trigger a nuclear disaster far worse than Chernobyl. For the latest on all of this, I'm joined by Kevin Camps, radioactive waste watchdog at Beyond Nuclear. Kevin, welcome back. Thanks, Tom. Um, first of all, the bluefin tuna. You were predicting this a year ago on this program. What's the status uh, of the tuna and seafood in general? Are we, you know, are, I got my Geiger counter, but I haven't gone down to the fish shop, and besides that, or the fish market, besides that, we're on the East Coast, not the West Coast. What's going on? Well, first of all, you need special monitors to check the internal contamination of bluefin tuna. You would need to... You can't, you you know, can't register cesium with a Geiger counter? Possibly, if it's on the surface, uh, you could detect it. But this is deep embedded in the muscle of the tuna, and that's exactly where it would go in humans. And apparently what happened, this new study that's out, Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, backed by researchers from uh, Stanford University, from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, shows that the muscle tissue of the tuna is contaminated with radioactive cesium-137, radioactive cesium-134, unmistakably, undeniably from Fukushima Daiichi, the massive releases of radioactivity into the ocean, which was unprecedented in scale and in nature, that happened in March and April of 2011. And actually, these readings on the tuna were taken in August of 2011. So incredibly, it takes this long for the truth to come out, even in abbreviated. Wait a minute. August was eight months ago, yeah. something like that. I mean, we, yeah. so nine months ago. So people who've been eating tuna for the last half a year have been eating cesium. 
We've been very concerned since the beginning of the catastrophe that the U.S. federal government has not been checking in anything close to an adequate way the food supply, especially the seafood supply, which is embedded with radioactivity. In this case, the tuna, which uh, spawned off the east coast of Japan, then swam across the ocean some 5,000 plus miles and arrived at Southern California in August of 2011. And that's, like you said, we discussed that, whether it's salmon, whether it's tuna, these predatory uh, fish of larger size have eaten smaller fish, which ate yet smaller fish, which ate plankton, all of which is concentrating the radioactivity up the food chain. So it's not just downstream, it's not just downwind, it's up the food chain over vast distances over long periods of time. Which is how tuna f end up with such high mercury levels as well, because they're at the top of the food chain, or close to the top of the food chain in the ocean. Um, let's talk about cesium for a moment. My understanding, you know, I, in the setup I said that the, the government is saying that this is um, ten times normal levels. If I'm wrong, correct me, but my understanding is that radioactive cesium pretty much doesn't exist normally, that the cesium left over from the Big Bang has long gone away, and that it's only the byproduct of radioactive decay. And so the, the natural background level of cesium should be zero. So what is the normal level that this is 10 times of? Well, is that the leftovers from the above ground nuclear blasts and things like that? You're absolutely right. Uh, the hundreds and even thousands of atmospheric bomb tests that took place uh, starting in 1945 with Trinity in New Mexico right. and then Hiroshima and then Nagasaki left radioactive cesium in the environment. But radioactive cesium-134 is relatively short-lived, a two-year half-life, which means it's more hazardous in the near term as it decays quickly. So there is radioactive cesium-134 in the tuna. That is from Fukushima Daiichi. Radioactive cesium-137 has a longer half-life of 30 years, so 300 to 600 years of hazardous persistence. That is also... So in 30 years, it's half as potent, and in 60 years, it's a quarter as potent, and 120... And to be conservative, you should really multiply the half-life by 20 to get the hazardous persistence. Okay. So a hazardous persistence for the cesium-134 is going to be more like 20 to 40 years. So how does cesium affect the human body? If you, if you eat some of this tuna, you know, what happens? It seeks human muscle tissue, and so one of the conditions that has come out of Chernobyl is called Chernobyl Heart, and there's actually an Oscar award-winning documentary film called Chernobyl Heart that shows that in children, uh, heart pathology that you wouldn't expect to see until much older ages is present in epidemic numbers in Belarus, Ukraine, Western Russia, including things like holes in the heart. And the Belarusian scientists that determined the mechanism for the radioactive cesium causing this harm was thrown in prison for a number of years by the Belarusian dictatorship because wow. it has a pro-nuclear agenda. Wow. Now, and, and that would be presumably because the heart is a massive muscle and it's regenerating itself continuously, probably more aggressively than other muscles in the body, and so it's continually uptaking nutrients that you eat, and the body thinks that cesium is potassium. Do I have that right? That's right. It yeah. cycles it through the same same and you're cycle. right, it doesn't exist in nature, so the body doesn't know what to do with it. It treats it like potassium, and that's and it, why it And it never excretes it, because potassium is something we need. You want to hang, the body wants to hang on to. Um, wow, that's amazing. Uh, and, and, and just to close that before we get to Reactor 4, safe levels of radiation. Again, my understanding is that one single particle, one single photon of, of radioactive energy, if it knocks... DNA, the, the DNA strand in a, the, the gene of one cell the wrong way, you've got cancer. Um, typically what it does is it kills the cells, but just all it takes is one radioactive atom and one cell to meet in the, in the correct way and boom, you've got cancer. So how could there be any dose that is safe? It's a part of the nuclear establishment's attempt to bamboozle the public, just like, uh, you know, radioactive cesium in nature, it's not in nature. This is artificial poison. Mm -hmm. And again, with the National Academy of Sciences going back decades, they've affirmed that any exposure to radioactivity, no matter how low the dose, carries a health risk of cancer. But those risks accumulate over a lifetime. 
So all of this downplaying of the radioactive cesium contamination in the tuna is yet another example of the nuclear establishment and industry and government trying to put people to sleep to these very real risks. Tobacco doesn't cause cancer. <laughs> Neither does nuclear. And they got away with that for decades. Yeah, yeah. And now the exact same scientists are the ones who are promoting, I mean, literally, some of the, the exact same scientists are promoting the idea that there's no such thing as global and warming and, and nuclear power is, is safe. Yeah.